Hello everybody, Vault Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at everyone's favorite avian Autobot descendant, Air Razor. This is Deluxe Class Air Razor from the Transformers Kingdom line. I picked this figure up over at thecommandstore.com. It will be available in any of your favorite retailers any day now. The figure comes in orange, kind of lightish brown, gray, gold, and purple for the face. And I gotta admit, this is the best robot mode that I think Hasbro could have pulled off for a bird. The head sculpt is very, very nice. It is well done. The helmet works incredibly well. And quite frankly, I don't think we've ever gotten a, as good an air razor head as what we've got here. And the purple, the green eyes, yeah, it, it, it's really good and accurately depicts him slash her. I use him, her, because quite frankly, I'm not entirely sure of the gender of the character. In Japan, Air Razor was a he. In the US, Air Razor is a her. In other territories, it actually changes throughout the seasons because the voice actors come and go. Air Razor has a peg hole on the back of its keister, and that allows it to be on a figure stand. And honestly, this is the way I display the figure most of the time. I find just putting this figure on a figure stand and having it fly around is my preferred way of posing it. I also like the fact that you can get a good chunk of posability, or you, the figure has a good chunk of posability, so that you can pull off some of the poses that they had in the show. Yeah, remember this pose from one of the shows where they flew up and just started shooting the blasters from their arms? Now those blasters are the only accessories that the figure comes with. We'll take a quick look at them up close. They're actually pretty well painted and appear to have weathering thanks to the weird paint. The weapons that Air Razor comes with are these cute little blasters. They are very tiny, and my cats have already played with them a little bit. They are molded or modeled in, yeah, molded in the that original gray, grayish, brownish plastic and the painted gold. I like them. I think they're a little bit on the big side for the character, but they do work really well. They ironically work better for figures that are chunkier than Air Razor is. As you can see, here's Huffer with them, and they work for Huffer. Actually, they look more like kind of worker implements or engineering implements rather than weapons. The figure has multiple ports to plug things into. There's the hands, obviously, one on each forearm, one on each thigh, and one on the back of each lower leg. And then the bottom of the feet, well, they're just too tiny for anything to peg in or to put a peg hole there. Nothing on the back, unfortunately, but I understand why, because that would royally screw up the look of the bird mode. Air Razor's posability is quite good. Head is on a ball joint and can look up and down and wiggle around. Swivel at the upper arm, though the swivel is interrupted by the backpack. Hinge for in and out. Over 90 degree bend at the elbow. Bicep swivel. And then there's an extra bend at the wrist for the transformations. Fists do not swivel, unfortunately. That is a shame. Torso swivel. Hips can kick forward and kick, kick out and kick, kick way out for the transformation. There is no thigh swivel, but there is a swivel just above the knee. Knees bend well over 90 degrees, and there is an actual extra joint for the transformation again, and then ball joints at the feet. The feet ball joint on my figure are far too loose. They do hold the figure up most of the time, but every once in a while, because of the back heaviness of the wings, it just kind of collapses under the weight. Nothing I can't fix myself. When attaching the flight stand or a flight stand, it's best to actually kind of untransform it a bit, fold the wings forward, flip the tail wing up, and then peg whatever it is the flight stand is going to peg into. Yeah, that made sense. Peg the flight stand into their keister, and then put the wings back, and then you can just have them, you know, standing in, in the sky. And on the flight stand, I prefer to have them doing a zero one one style rider kick. Just a personal preference. Air Razor's transformation is pretty simple, and I kind of forgive it for being simple. To start off with, we're going to come to the back and unpeg the wings, and then just kind of fold them all the way out like that. Grab the area just behind the head and open it up with the top of the back unpegged. Grab the entire upper torso and hinge it up and like this, and then got to get it all the way up. Otherwise, things aren't going to work. Then we can grab the bird head 
and flip the robot head down into the torso like this and then hinge the back all the way up. You see those little yellow hinges in there? We want them pointing up flush like that so then we could collapse the back on and peg it in behind the bird head and then leave the tail up just a little bit like this. Now what this does is it gives us a cavity that we can actually peg the arms in, or the fists into. So collapse the fists at the wrists and then just kind of sandwich them in there like this. Yeah, it's not pretty, but this is what you got to do. And then make sure that the arms are perfectly straight, come to the shoulder pads and fold them down. Now that we have the arms taken care of, grab the hips and turn them around 180 degrees and then flip the legs out and up. And there are little peg holes right in the inside of the thighs. And they will peg into these little struts that are sticking off the inside of the legs. Oh, but before we do that, we then turn the lower legs around 180 degrees and bend them down. And then those will peg in nice and easy. Then we can fold them down like this and then collapse the shins and we're done. And in the beast mode, I will fully acknowledge that it very much looks like a robot is squatting that has the outside of a bird. It actually reminds me more of things from Animorphs than it does Transformers. Which technically Animorphs were Transformers back in the toy days. Oops, got a little problem right here. Uh, come on, you. Open up. There we go. The bird mode has grown on me, though. I actually like it quite a bit. With this, with spinning the hips around, you do get the peg hole now on the bottom of the bird. You can also use the screw hole that's just underneath the bird head as a point of mount or as a mount point, or you can use the openings on either side. I realize that I have the feet turned around backwards. That's an oops on my part. But the wings are fully poseable, mostly. The head is poseable, and... As a bird mode, it works pretty well. I'm not sure what better things they could have done for a deluxe class figure than what we've gotten. For posability, the bird head is on a swivel, and then there's a hinge. There's a nasty screw hole on the side, on the right side. The bird mouth does open, though it is very difficult to get that to open. you got to use a lot of force to open that beak up. Wings are fully posable on multiple hinges and then a swivel here for the wing to fold out so you can get a decent looking bird. Yeah, even in bird mode, it does look a bit weird and wonky, especially with, you know, robot kibble sticking off the back. But I can't argue with, with you know, posing it such that the bird looks like it's flying by. It, it works really well. And when you bank it and kind of lean it so that the least amount of robot kibble is showing up, it works. I mean, it really, really works. When I first got Air Razor out of the box, I had a lot of misgivings. I did not like the figure to start, but the figure grew on me the more and more I fiddled with it. And overall, it's a solid dang figure. And I'm really happy that we got it. It's just one of those figures that we've never really gotten a good figure of. Yes, there was the original Beast Wars figure. Yes, there was the trans metal figure and its many repaints. But this is the first deluxe class air razor that's solidly good. Now, in terms of height, we've got to compare it to a couple of other figures. Voyager class Dinobot. Leader class Megatron in Barney mode. Voyager class Optimus Primal. Core class Rat Trap. Fellow deluxe class Cheetor. And a cat. I'm sorry, kitty. Did that scare you? I did not mean to scare you. Would you like to play with the giant robots? Would you like to play with the Beast Wars? Huh? Would you like to be with Beast Wars? Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Not the microphone. No! At the end of the day, Deluxe Class Air Razor is a ton of fun. Are they perfect? Not really. But I'm actually really happy with the figure. Also, do me a favor, go over on Twitter and follow my good buddy Grimlockimus at the Chrome Tyranno. He has done an absolutely beautiful repaint of this toy into two different figures. One, a more photo, or I should say show accurate Air Razor, and two, a repaint of Air Razor into Slipstream. So yeah, they're pretty good. And this figure is also pretty good.
So folks, let me know what you think of the figure down in those comments. Please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And we finally figured out what is going on with the notification bell. If you click the notification bell and it doesn't work, unsubscribe to my from my channel and then resubscribe and the notification bell will work. I don't know why. Dang YouTube. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I've been Bolt Matrix, and I'll catch you next time. Hello everyone, I'm Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Studio Series number 71, Dino. Now, Dino was an Autobot that was in Dark of the Moon, and it wasn't until this figure showed up that I remembered that Dino exists. Now, Dino transforms into a Ferrari 458 Italia, in the movie, the toy transforms into a Ferrari-esque vehicle mode. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit. The actual figure itself is standard deluxe class size for Studio Series and is quite nice, even if it could use a little bit more paint. The figure's in red, silver, and black with a little bit of blue for the eyes. I'll do a close up here in a second. And it works overall and it really does feel very genuine to my Italian heritage. Short, wide, stocky. Yeah, that, that explains us Italians pretty well. I get what the designers are going for with the face, and it works well towards the movie likeness, but let's face it, the figure was, or character was just utterly forgettable. Hell, I've been doing this for I don't know how many years, and I forgot this character existed. So forgive me if I don't even really recognize the face at all. Kind of looks like a pumpkin for some reason. Dino comes with this highway scene that I legit don't remember ever happening in the movie. I'm sure it did. And in fact, according to TF Wiki, that was the only action he really saw. So at least it's accurate. I really feel guilty for not remembering who this character is or that it ever existed. The figure has these two wing doors that are actually pretty darn poseable and Refreshing, considering Bumblebee's wing doors are always a little bit on the annoying side. He comes with two different weapons, or I should say two accessories that are the same weapon, and that are these blades that just peg into 5mm ports on the bottom of his forearms. There's nowhere else for them to peg in. It would be funny if you could stick them onto his butt, however, you cannot. There's a stand port between the figure's legs so you can get him to pose a little bit. And speaking of posability, let's start with the bottom first. There is no ankle side to side, but there is forward and back to a point. That's for the transformation. Legs are on ball joints, vice or thigh swivels, bends at the knees, and then, well, that's about it for the foot. There is no torso articulation due to the transformation. Ball joint in the shoulder with plenty of movement, and then an arm swivel that is exceptionally tight. And then a, well, bend at the elbow that goes a bit farther than you might think is possible, thanks to the transformation, and a fist swivel that is just tight enough. Finally, the head is on a ball joint. However, it's just kind of stuck because you can only bend it so far before it starts hitting these collarbone exhausts. Or are they supposed to be rear view mirror or side view mirrors. I don't know. Either way, the head runs into them and limits posability a little bit. The blades may be carried in the hands with no issues whatsoever. That frees up the bottom of the forearms to have, you know, guns attached. Dino is a little bit on the small side for a deluxe until you start putting him up next to the other deluxes and he's roughly the same size as Shatter, minus the ginormous backpack, but he is a head smaller than Soundwave and I do have a Bumblebee around here, I just can't find it. But as you can see, Studio Series Jazz towers over the guy. All right, let's go ahead and get in the transformation and hold on to your butts because this is a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Sorry to interrupt the music, but there are two pegs that are coming off the forearms that will actually peg into the, these areas underneath the hood. 
It's a little bit difficult to line up, but once you get it lined up, nothing's moving. The car mode we end up with is adjacent to a Ferrari. It's not exactly a Ferrari. It's fine, but it misses that certain je ne sais quoi that a Ferrari has. This is just generic sports car. I'm not complaining about that, though, because the sports car we end up with is actually pretty good. It's just not a Ferrari. The tires are actually well painted, which I appreciate, and the overall aesthetic works okay. It's just not a Ferrari. Anywho, color, paint. I think it's pretty close. Under bright lights, you could tell that that panel doesn't match that panel, that doesn't match these panels. That's because the doors and the roof are all clear plastic. Thankfully, so far, it doesn't suffer from Jazz Shatter Syndrome that a lot of folks have had to do deal with with Studio Series Jazz. I'm not one of them yet. I do worry about the longevity of this guy, though, because this whole roof section, clear plastic, and the doors, clear plastic, painted over. But they feel thicker than Jazz does, so there is that. If you pick up this figure, you can do the veritable doot de doo It does roll well, as long as you've got it transformed correctly. While I have been shooting this video review, I realized that none of my figures are in vehicle mode. And I'm a little bit pressed for time, so I don't have time to transform it into, or transform them into vehicle mode to do a suitable size comparison. So you're going to get a tank, Titans Returns Quake, and, um, a Triceratops. Yeah, that's good enough. Yep, it's smaller than both of them. At the end of the day, Dino is a welcome addition to the Studio Series family. It is a fun figure, a good transformation, solid robot mode, a questionable vehicle mode that does technically work, but overall, I like it. It's worth picking up. For a character that had, oh, Five minutes worth of screen time total, maybe 10. So folks, let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and be sure to hit that bell. As I said in my Air Razor review, if you hit the bell and you're already subscribed and it doesn't work, unsubscribe from my channel, then resubscribe and it'll work again. Don't know why. So folks, thanks for watching. I've been Bull Matrix and I'll catch you next time. Hello everybody, I'm Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Studio Series number 72, Starscream, from the Bumblebee movie. I we're going to start this figure off in vehicle mode, simply because I think that is more interesting. The robot mode we'll get to in just a moment. The vehicle mode is not how the figure is packaged, it is in fact packaged in robot mode. As you can see, we have the weird Tetra Jet form that, let's just call it divisive. Yes, we'll call it divisive and leave it at that. Now, the one thing I do have to admit is there's a lot of really cool detail going on here. That nose cone, however, I don't like it. I want it to be full, filled in. But there's a lot of other nice detailing going on with the mold and the actual figure itself. The protrusion coming off the bottom is a little bit weird. I mean, it's the arms folded up practically. And the fact that the figure has the robot mode's head sticking out the back there is annoying but overall it's not bad it it's really not bad it looks alien it obviously is a plane but not of this earth and that's pretty cool i'm not sure how well this shows up on camera but there is a molded cockpit in there and what looks to be a seat that is right there, but there's a peg in there that actually holds the canopy on, but you can reach your fingernail in here and kind of lift up the canopy 
to see that, yeah, there's a whole cockpit molded in there, which is just weird. Another weird oddity is the fact that the entire thing is held up by its weapon. If you unpeg the weapon, it can stand, but it doesn't stand as well. Now, this gun is one of the three accessories that the figure comes with. This is the accessory that comes with a Blitzwing. They are not the same. They are molded very similarly, almost identical in look, just not in size. The gun does connect to the vehicle mode via these three tabs, like that, and then we have this thing, which on the side, or from an angle, it looks pretty good, but as soon as you look at it straight on, you realize how thin it is, and no, I haven't been able to figure out a better way to attach the rear tail wing so that it doesn't flop around. The wings do have these other accessories that are the guns, and they are very, very loosely on there. As soon as I start touching or moving the figure, the guns have a tendency, the black guns that is on the side, have a tendency to fall off. Now they do have variable wing configurations. You can slide the wings back like that, and you can have it have an attack mode like a TIE fighter or an X-Wing or something from Star Wars. It could come in and fly in like that. And that actually would work, I think, better for a more heavier oxygen atmosphere to provide more lift as opposed to the light oxygen and nitrogen atmosphere of Cybertron. And also, this just looks more scary. Now, the discourse online has been that, oh, Starscream here is just a remold of not Starscream, aka Blitzwing, from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. And I would agree, sort of. Sort of. Because these figures are very different, especially the under kibble. There's obviously a whole heck of a robot folded up here. I mean, th this whole bottom section is the chest and torso and arms and the legs and back torso is all of this, and then the backpack is literally this whole section right here. So it's very different, very different transformations and very different feel for both figures. All right, let's go ahead and get into the transformation. And here we go, here is the robot mode! And I gotta admit, it looks awesome! It looks alien, it looks Seeker-esque, it looks pretty much how exactly I wanted it to look. Except for the back, I kinda screwed that up. These should be folded up more. Yeah, who cares. It's a great figure. It really holds together well, all the joints are super tight, and it looks really good really alien. I'm really happy with it. And it it's, it's just cool. It is just cool. And they managed to get the Starscream colors perfectly. A and I really do mean that. The red is the exact red I think it should be. The gray or off creamish white is, it could be a little bit darker, but it actually works incredibly well here on this figure. And the blue is nice, bright and vibrant, and through the transformation, the Decepticon symbols are pointing in the correct, or what I think are the correct directions in both modes. So yeah, it's a winner. What would I change? The only thing I would really change is one, give us the Decepticon symbol here, and fill in the wings on the backs here and here, 
and make it so that these guns, as soon as they are moved, don't have a tendency to fall out. The actual plastic is that weird nylon plastic that Hasbro has been using over the last year or two, and they, they're really slick, so I had to rough up the actual pegs with a little bit of, sa uh, what do you call it? Sand. Sandpaper. Yes, sandpaper. Ugh, it's been a day. So, anyway, robot mode, it's tight, it's awesome. Let's look at it a little bit closer. Starting at the feet, you can see that the molding is excellent and they really went all out with the paint on the plastic on this guy it, it just it works it really does work now i that's not to say it can't be improved i would love for my buddy grim Lockamus to get a hold of it and do something with it which i'm sure he will but it's really nice now what's not really nice is the head sculpt i am not the biggest fan of this head sculpt it's not bad mind you but i think it could be better the face is not my favorite, but I do appreciate the nice vibrant blue eyes, blue eyes, red eyes, and the black of the head works well. Posability for the figure is also pretty darn good. Head is on a ball joint. There's a swivel in the shoulder and a hinge for in and out movement. Bend at the elbow, swivel at the upper bicep. Unfortunately, the fists do not rotate. That's my biggest complaint about the robot mode is the fists don't rotate there is a tor okay there is another complaint about the robot mode i'll talk about it in a second there is torso articulation but it's very very tight legs can kick forward about 90 degrees can't really kick back all that well due to the backpack but can kick out at well 90 degrees there is a thigh swivel and bend at the elbow bend at the elbow cheese bend at the knee is a little over 90 degrees and then some nice ankle articulation wow that's very flexible and foot articulation is on a swivel for yikes 180 degrees practically now the one thing that i absolutely dislike about this figure is this weird crotch plate it's right here in the box it comes well transformed such that it's pushing right up against the figure and the figure can't hips can't move until you push it all the way out and then the hips can move it doesn't need to be there i don't know why it's there i think it doesn't add anything to the figure and i would prefer to take it off or i would prefer it not be there but if it's not there then there's a hole in the vehicle mode now compared to blitzwing starscream looks pretty darn good i like the coloring of starscream more than i do blitzwing but blitzwing is a fantastic figure on its own and then we've got this cybertronian version which is starscream and it's a fantastic figure on its own man we're just spoiled with studio series right now these things are great before we do another size comparison one word of not warning but of note there's nowhere on the shoulders or on the forearms to mount a gun I would have loved to have seen the ability to mount these things like right here or even up here on the shoulders you can't yeah oh well and just for comparison's sake here's a menagerie of figures we've got kingdom dinobot studio series jazz and grimlock and mp10 prime for good measure man these are really nice figures the voyager and the leaders classes are just so nice if you're a fan of the Bumblebee movie aesthetic, especially for what we've been getting in Studio Series, I highly recommend picking this figure up. This figure is currently available over at thecommandstore.com and should be available at the Chosen Prime, Big Bad Toy Store, Amazon, and any other e-tailer. And heck, it's even showing up in retail at this point. So folks, let me know what you think of this figure down in the comments. It is an excellent figure in my opinion and totally worth having in your collection. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bomb Matrix, and I'll catch you all next time.
Studio Series 86 Deluxe Class Jazz is a figure that many fans have been waiting for for a long time. That's not to say we haven't had jazz figures in the Deluxe Class line. In fact, we've had several of them. Some movie, some combining, some leaving you questioning your moral sanity, your moral compass and sanity. This figure is a more Generation 1 accurate figure and it's better and worse for it. This figure is a lot of fun. It looks great, and it's a decent size. However, it disappoints in a couple of areas. Overall, though, is it worth your money? Let's find out. Coming in at a smidge smaller than Earthrise Blue Streak, and nearly a head shorter than Deluxe Studio Series Cup, it's odd. It is just very, very odd that the figure is this tiny, but I can't deny that it looks fantastic in robot mode. In the terms of painting and molding, Hasbro got everything right here. The coloring is accurate, and the overall aesthetic of the figure is spot on. The head sculpt alone is simply fantastic. The blue visor, the silver faceplate and mouth with the black head, it's perfect. I cannot find fault with the head sculpt or the rest of the look of the robot mode at all. The figure comes with this blaster that looks exactly like his Generation 1 blaster should, and it's pretty show accurate as far as I can tell. Posability for Jazz is also... Posability ja for Jazz is... Posability for Jazz is also excellent. Head is on a ball joint. There is a set of swivels and hinges in the shoulder. Bicep swivel. Yes, that is the bicep. Unfortunately, no fist articulation, but the elbow does bend a nice 90 degrees. Torso articulation is present with a nice range of motion in the legs. Bend at the knee is 90 degrees, and there is toe articulation for the transformation. And then folding, well, 90 degrees for heels. When you pick the figure up to pose it, this is where things start to fall apart a little bit, specifically in the knees. There are these little clips that are supposed to peg in to these openings on the inside of the knees, but they just kind of rest there. They don't actually peg in, and even when you apply pressure and it snaps into place, they just pop right back out, which sucks. Just flat out sucks. But those movable knees do allow you to pull off poses that would otherwise be impossible for a figure who has more static knees. Knee issue aside, I think this is the best Jazz we've ever gotten in terms of looks. You can even see the wheels inside of his armpits. And you can, if you so choose, sort of fold out the wings. Okay, that doesn't work all that well. Now what we've got standing next to Studio Series Jazz is Make Toys version of the figure, who is far and away my favorite third-party Jazz figure. As you can see, he's significantly shorter, but the coloring and the actual painting are virtually identical, except for the racing stripes on the sides of the feet and the back. Well, no, the top does have it. It's just the sides of the legs. Now, if you are a sticker fan, I strongly recommend, if you pick, decide to pick this figure up, going over to Toy Hacks and getting a repro label. From what I've seen, especially over at the Lazy Eyebrows channel, those repro label stickers are phenomenal and they work really well and they make the figure look so much better, especially in robot mode. Now, a word of warning to folks that have issues with, you know, hollow bits. Forearms are hollow and the inside of the legs are hollow and the back of the legs are hollow and his insides are hollow. But I totally forgive this in the thighs because... Who cares? Now a major, major problem with this figure that is seeing a ton of breakage is the entire backpack here. This encompasses the entire roof, the rear, the side windows, the front windscreen, and the rear of the car, and the doors. So what's the problem? Well, it's all clear plastic that is Oh, the, the sounds that this thing makes when you transform it, like I just did right there, the creaks and the cracks and the crunch that you hear from moving plastic around, specifically clear plastic, is very worrying, and I doubt this is going to stand the test of time. It sucks that they had to use clear plastic, but from multiple people that seem to work at Hasbro, from what I've seen, there was only so much room in the mold and there was only so much budget they had to work with for Jazz. So, yeah, 
yeah, it sucks, but w- what am I going to do? I mean, seriously, what am I going to do? Is a third party going to come out and 3D print a better top? I doubt it. Now that we've already got some of the transformation done, let's go ahead and get the rest of it done. Fold the fists up into the forearms, come to the chest, and push it up just a little bit, and the top or the part of the hood that pegs into the chest, grab it and pull all the way forward, and then flip the entire head up all the way, and there is just barely enough clearance between his collar or sternum folding in and that top of the hood. And if you've got the repro labels, it's going to scrape. It just is. Fold the head all the way up. Take that section that I just talked about. Fold it up to form the hood of the car. Take the arms and flip them, or shoulders, and flip them in to the body. Like this. Like so. Come down to the feet, fold the toes up into the bottom of the feet, grab the wheel arches and fold them down until they kind of get flush with the back of the legs. Then collapse the knees and collapse the legs into the rear of the vehicle mode. Peg them together. Now that we're at this part, take the entire rear section, turn it 180 degrees. Grab the silver abdomen section and turn it 180 degrees. And then we can fold the arms down and have the little pegs pointing out and drop the rear of the vehicle mode down into place. Tuck it in, peg it into place in the back, fold the doors down and peg them into the forearms. Jazz's alt mode is incredibly nice looking. I I absolutely love it. And the 14, if you're wondering, is a combination between his original Generation 1 number 4 car and his Generation 2 number 1 car. Yes, he was a number 1 in Generation 2. Unfortunately, there's nowhere to store the gun except at the top, and good luck trying to get it in there, as you might have just seen a fleck just snapped off. So, you know what? I'm not even going to bother trying to get it on there. Now, this Porsche mode, even though I do really like it, is a little bit odd. It is not his original Generation 1 Porsche Porsche mode completely. It's like the combination or the weird bugger combination of three different Porsche vehicles. All, All racing, all racing cars, but the rear wheel arches in the back are from one Porsche from like the late 80s early 90s the front is from an early 90 or early 80s Porsche and this it's just weird oh and the feet that's from a mid 90s Porsche car roughly roughly the feet sticking off the back is weird i'm not going to lie about that but overall it's fine In terms of size in the vehicle mode, it feels like Jazz is small, but it's actually not. As you could see, here's Blur from Studio Series and Quake from Titans Returns, all roughly the same size. I like Studio Series Jazz a lot, but I feel like I'm treading on very thin ice with the figure, simply because of the issues that I've seen online with the entirety of the roof. I'm not going to lie, that... It's got me scared. It really does. Uh, I'm just babying it whenever I transform it, whenever I fiddle with it. I just am very, very, very careful with it. And that's a shame because it's a cool figure. It's fun. It's nice to see that Hasbro is giving us fans a Generation 1 Jazz that's worth a darn. Oh, and for the rear of the roof to transform correctly, I found the best option or the best way to do it is fold the, w- the doors in just a little bit like we see here, reach your finger in and just push down until it gets to just touching the doors, then fold the doors out so that they're straight up and down. Then you can push the rear section up into place and then fold the doors over it. Not going to lie. That's really, really scary, considering how much breakage there is, or I've seen online with this guy. It's, it's scary. It really is. 
Oh, and then the chest, you got to get that right. But overall, I still think it's a good figure. Just be careful. Just be careful. Don't manhandle it. Don't throw it against a wall. Definitely don't let your cats try to eat it. And don't feed it to Unicron. Otherwise, he'll be like a Xeno Transformer Xenomorph and just pop out of your eyes. All right, folks, let me know what you think of Jazz down in the comments. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Be sure to hit that bell. And like I've said in previous videos, if you hit that bell and you get an error, unsubscribe and resubscribe to my channel, then the bell will work. Thanks a lot for watching. I've been Ball Matrix, and I will catch you next time. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Bolt Matrix and today we are taking a look at Buggy Man from the Machine Robo Revenge of Kronos line. I picked this figure up over at the Big Bad Toy Store. This number 12 figure in the line is actually very cool. Buggy Robo scales to just being a head shorter than most deluxe class figures in the Transformers line. So even though he is a little bit more expensive than most Transformers, he is roughly the same size, just a little bit smaller. The molding is also top notch, and overall this is a fantastic looking figure and looks so much better than that original GoBot that we got so many years ago. In fact, that GoBot was probably one of the worst GoBots in the entire line, next to Blaster and Tank, who both have ended up being absolutely fantastic figures in this new Machine Robo line. Action Toys is the company that makes these figures, and for a while they went dark. For a good while. Like, a year and a half almost. They went completely dark. Just nothing. And then all of a sudden, we're getting new figures. We got Tough Trailer, we got Buggy Robo, and we got Jet Robo, or Flight Robo, or whatever was Fly Tour here in the U.S. is now coming. And I hope to have that figure soon as well. I already have Tough Trailer in hand, and I will be reviewing this figure soon-ish, as soon as I get around to it. Uh, it's been real busy here at Bolt Matrix Central, like insanely busy, so forgive me for videos being a little bit slower than normal. Buggy Robo's weapon is this boombox bazooka that has two forms. One, the extended bazooka form, and then this form, the non-extended bazooka or cannon form. You just flip it around or shorten the stack, flip it around, and peg it into the figure's hands so you get a gun. And yeah, that is a boombox, like a legit 80s sand and waterproof boombox. Man... Feels r I feel old, because I recognized this thing as soon as I saw it. Transformation, as you saw, is just sliding it out. But to transform the grip, you just fold it up all the way in, and then slide it up. And he could rock out using this thing. Yes, I realize this looks incredibly goofy, but it's kind of what I, envi uh, what I envision him looking like when he's carrying it in this mode. Though I do have to admit, getting the actual boombox to rest on his shoulder and getting him to grip it is a lot harder than you might think it should be. The only other accessory that this figure comes with is this little peg that, well, plugs directly into his butt so you can put the figure on a flight stand or a figure stand of some sort. And on a figure stand, he looks good. However, the one thing I find very strange is the actual peg hole that goes in here is way bigger than your traditional flight stand or figure stands. It just drops right on and wiggles about way too much because there, there's a lot of play in there. I don't have a figure stand that actually works great with him or any other Action Master Machine Robo. Action Master? Action Toy Machine Robo figure. I guess I gotta invest in another one? Amazon, here I come. In terms of posability, this figure is chock full of posable joints. Head is on a ball joint, but Getting the head to move is a little bit difficult. You really have to kind of push on it because there's a lot of friction in that ball joint, but all the other ones are fine. Ball joint in the shoulder and then an extra hinge. Then you've got a swivel joint just above the elbow, elbow and a ball joint for the fists. Unfortunately, the forearms are hollow that... Uh, what are you going to do? Torso articulation. Unfortunately, no ab crunch. Would have liked to have seen an ab crunch. Ball joint in the hip for lots of posability. Swivel at the thigh ratchet bend at the knee and then a ball joint at the toe slash foot but you have to be careful because if you pose the toe wrong you're just going to unpeg the shin and trust me these shins do not want to stay pegged in they they do peg in fairly okay but as soon as you go to move things around they come unpegged that's the only real complaint of the figure that i have 
Okay, if you really must know, there is one other flaw that I have with the figure, and I'm not sure how to fix it if you can. He doesn't have any heels. Like, look at that. That is his heel right here. It doesn't extend back farther. So if you've got him even, like, slightly off kilter, he's just going to drop. Buggy Robo's transformation, or er, conversion is very easy but the hardest part is with the head you have to turn the head around 180 degrees like this and when you first get the figure out of the box use a toothpick to wiggle the head back and forth by pushing on the edges of the visor otherwise you're not going to be able to get his head to flip around once you do that come down to the chest and unpeg the chest once the chest is open fold it up and close it up over the back of the head and then you've got frog mode Okay, I'm being facetious. Next, take the shoulders and fold them up. Bend the elbows 90 degrees. Fold the fists in. Peg the shoulders into place using this peg that's in the armpit. Get that pegged in and then fold the arm in and peg it into place and then re-straighten out the shoulder because it will move on you. And do the same for the other side. Once the torso is converted, we can move on to the legs. Come to the back and flip up the front windscreen and unpeg the little butt plug, take the entire top torso, turn it around 180 degrees, come down to each leg and turn them 180 degrees at the thigh swivel like this, come to the feet and pull them away to unpeg the shins from the rest of the leg, take the entire bottom leg and flip it up and peg it into place at the hips like that, do the same on the other side, come down to the bottom parts of the front legs and peg the, well, what were the knee sections together and then peg the feet together like this. And then this whole section will flip around and rest gently there. And then take the seats, fold them back so that they are angled. And that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, this whole back section doesn't really peg into place. It just kind of firmly rests there. And the last thing we could do is take the boom box. Notice the little gray pant piece. And that will peg in right here in the back. Like so. And then we got this jammin' beachcomber dune buggy. I love the dune buggy mode. I mean, you can't get much more of an 80s-centric or even 70s-centric vehicle mode than this. I mean, heck, there was a whole Hanna-Barbera cartoon based around a dune buggy. It works incredibly well, and it's a ton of fun. It has plenty of doot de doo action. I mean, the heck, the wheels both front and back move with no problem whatsoever and it looks good it looks like a rear wheel ve rear wheel powered vehicle that is meant to go on a beach though technically the wheels really should be a lot bigger like significantly bigger to deal with the sand but who cares about re realism now a bunch of folks that follow me over on twitter have stated that this would be a good candidate for beachcomber if beachcomber was cool I disagree because I think they are both fundamentally different. Yes, Beachcomber is a goody two shoes who wants to protect the environment, yada, yada, yada. But his vehicle mode, while it is a dune buggy, is a dune buggy that's meant more for racing and much and more for much more. Oh, what's the best way to phrase this? It is. It's got a roll bar. It's much more intended to be something that's for racing or just something that's intended for a little bit more difficult terrain than what Buggy here is meant for. This guy is, whoops, popped his arm off. This guy's vehicle mode is meant for the, sorry if you hear music in the background, that is my washer and dryer going. This guy's vehicle mode is not meant for very super tough sandy beaches this one's much more meant for the florida beaches or the much more sand impacted beaches that you would find that a lot of beach bums like to go to or more commercial beaches as opposed to say like a private beach or a much more sandy not sandy much looser sand that beachcombers alt mode would allow him to traverse this one is more for it's much more more road worthy or meant for more roads or a lot less tough environments. Anywho, I still think this is a good figure. I like it a lot. I would love to get a beachcomber that's roughly the same size and same intri intricateness of the figure. I don't know how big the fans toys version is, 
but I'm thinking of getting it because I really like dune buggies for some reason. I picked this figure up over at the Big Bad Toy Store. It is currently available there right now at the time of this video, so head on down to the link in the description to pick one up for yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video review. Let me know what you think of Buggy Robo here, and please make sure you're subscribed so you can catch up some, on some more videos. I've got, like I said, Tough Trailer coming, and as soon as I get a hold of of Fly Robo, Flight Robo, Jet Robo, whatever he's calling himself this week, Fly Tour, I'll be reviewing that figure as well. So, as always, I've been Ball Matrix, and I'll catch you all next time.